A mechanical man will be more than that. More than just a hired hand. Can't you see what this will mean to the world? He'll relieve men from dangerous jobs in all lines of hazardous work. There'll be no more deaths from cave-ins and mines. No losses from construction men falling to their deaths from skyscrapers. He'll take his place in these and many other positions where men lose their lives daily. Why, carefully directed, he'll be the greatest insurance to world peace that has yet been thought of. No. I haven't invented this man to abuse as a handyman around the house. Of course, I didn't mean that... No, Madge. The mechanical man will be the answer to our future national security. I'll build thousands of them. Can you see an aggressive country attacking any country which has an army of steel men who can't be killed? But, Dr. Morton, I thought you were interested in this purely from the scientific point of view. And I am. But if I can give the world more, I'll not stop there. Now, Frank, don't get excited. Believe me, my friends, I am not unduly excited. But the prospect of what we are about to create here is tremendous. I, I can't help being carried away. Why don't you time out, Pop? You're right, Barry. I won't let myself get carried away until we see if we really do have a mechanical man who can do all these things. You mean you're going to do it now? Yes, now. Could I help you, Uncle Frank? What could you do? Well, Uncle Frank said we were all going to help him. Didn't you, Uncle Frank? Well, yes, I did, Janet. But I'm afraid there's nothing you girls could do right now except give us your moral support. Is there anything I can do, sir? Yes, James. Would you connect that line for me? The one over there on the other side of the bench. Right. And John, if you hold this left arm in place, we'll make that final adjustment we were about to make before Mrs. Morton come in. Higher. Uh, certainly, sir. Can I help too, Pop? No, I'm afraid not, son. You stand over there with Mary and Janet. There'll be plenty you can all do later on. Oh, gee, I don't ever get to do nothing. You come over here by me, dear, and stay out of your father's way. Oh, gee. I think we've got it. That should do it, Dr. Morton. Well, I guess that just about gets it, sir. Good, good. Now we'll see if all our work has been in vain. Here, give me a hand. Oh, Betty, we didn't see you come in, my dear. Darling, you, you look so pale. I'm all right, Jim. I've been worried about you, but Mrs. Morton said to leave you alone for a few minutes. Yes, I'm afraid I've been behaving rather badly. Everything seems to be getting on my nerves now. Well, everything will be all right now, Betty. I'm glad you're here. We're just about to prove our experiment. Dad can make them walk, Betty. That's fine, Barry. I'll be with you in a moment, dear. Please go on. Don't let me interrupt your work. Come over here by me, dear. All right. Now, James, if you pull the switch up there. Right. <laughs> hey, James, the switch. What is it, Betty? Tell us. It moved. It moved. Yes, I know. I was just about to set the man up and start him walking. But did you see that expression in his face? No. No, I don't know what you're talking about. There's no expression in his face, Betty. He's just a mechanical man. But he looked at me. I swear he was staring at me. There, there. Now, dear, you're all upset again. Come with me. Oh, I'm sorry, but I... Better take her upstairs, Madge. Give her a sedative. I will, Frank. Come with me, dear. All right. Shall I come along? No, no, James. I think it's better if we go alone. Dr. Morton, do you think that... No, she'll be all right, James. Now, let's get back to where we were. Hey, Poppy, move! I believe it's working, Dr. Morton. Oh, Frank, he does move. He does. Larry, let go of my arm. You're pinching me. Isn't it wonderful? He moves. He really moves. Now we'll see how he reacts to my direction. Oh, Frank, he almost seems human. Yes, this exceeds my wildest hopes. He's strong, too. Just feel the resistance in his arm. I can see what Betty meant now. I could swear I saw him sneer just then. That's nonsense. This is a man of steel, John. He has no mind, no willpower of his own. You're all overwrought. As you know, he's controlled by voice impulses. Take one step forward. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now walk forward. Return to the bench. I said return to the bench. Stop him, James. Back. Back to the bench. Oh, so that's the way you want it. How 
is he? Just seems to have had the wind knocked out of him. What was that? It sounded like Betty. You take care of James. I'll go see. Mrs. Morton. He came into the room where Betty was resting. Go on. And he scooped her up in his arms and he carried her up. I came running down here as fast as I could. Come on, John. We've got to stop that thing. Yes, sir. Oh. 